What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing exotics in Destiny, and specifically whether or not over time it has become just too easy to acquire exotics within Destiny. Now the reason I'm making this video is just to contribute my thoughts to this discussion. I think Bungie is going to be very interested in seeing what the community thinks of this and many other issues issues within Destiny, especially with the fast approaching release of Destiny 2. It's slotted for a fall 2017 release, which is coming up kinda soon. And I do mean community. I hope you guys also contribute to the discussion by leaving in the comment section down below what parts you agree or even disagree with me on. But of course, don't be that person who has already left an all caps locks comment. You're not contributing to the discussion if I haven't made literally any points in the video yet. You're just shouting. And with that being said, if you guys think that this is an important topic to cover, I hope you take the time to support the video by liking, commenting, and especially sharing. So let's get started here by discussing how the ways you can get exotics have changed over time by looking at how how you could get exotics when Destiny first came out in September 2014, which seems like forever ago, and then now in 2017. So in 2014, when Destiny first came out, there was only a few ways to actually acquire exotics. Firstly, the way that is probably most associated with it, the way that you'd be doing this to get, you know, specifically to get exotics would be the Nightfall. When you completed the Nightfall, you had about a 30% chance to just be outright given an exotic weapon or armor piece at the end screen. That remains true today. We also had the Raid. Remember that there was only one Raid at the time, the Vault of Glass, and you had an exotic chest, one exotic chest within it. You open this chest, you had a chance to get an exotic weapon or armor piece. Any other chest did not give you exotics. And then you did have also the chance to get exotics on certain sections of the raid. For example, when you beat the Vault of Glass, like when you killed Atheon, you did have a chance to outright get an exotic. Moving on from there, you could also get an exotic completely randomly as a crucible drop, and they're very commonly associated with the classic Destiny example of someone going 0 and 10 on the leaderboards and getting a Galahorn. You also had a very small chance to get an exotic from an engram. If you took a legendary engram to the Cryptarch and decrypted it, you could get instead of a legendary, an exotic. And that still rings true today. I remember my first ever exotic was I took an engram to the Cryptarch, decrypted it, and got the Crest of Alpha Lupi. This was at the time when I only had one character, my Titan. Like, this was super early in Destiny. I was so hyped because I knew that the Crest could actually be used on a titan i looked at it nope it was the hunter version of the crest i literally started a hunter that second so i could actually utilize that exotic that's how exciting exotics were back in the day but moving on there was one last way to actually acquire exotics in vanilla destiny that was of course through the bounty system. You could, by handing in normal bounties, randomly get an exotic bounty. That's how originally you got the Thorn exotic hand can, was that you'd just be handing in your normal Vanguard bounties, and then suddenly you would get that special exotic bounty. Upon completion of that, you would get the Thorn exotic hand cannon. And certain other weapons, like the Pocket Infinity, worked that way as well. So those are all of the ways that you could randomly acquire exotics as rewards in Vanilla Destiny. But of course you could outright buy them from Xur, who visits the tower every weekend. Now over time, without any changes to these methods, exotics just naturally became easier to get. With the best example being raids. At the beginning there was only one raid, the Vault of Glass. So you could play it three times per week, you know, three different characters but when Crota's End came out and that raid also had an exotic chest and it also had the chance to get exotics at the end screen or I should say for the final battle and stuff 
that became just an additional way to get exotic. So, whereas before you could play three raids a week, now you could play six raids a week, literally doubling your chances to get exotics through raids. Now, although I actually listed quite a few different ways to get exotics in vanilla Destiny, it was still considered very hard to get them when Destiny first came out. And the main reason was because although there were a lot of different ways to get exotics, they were all tied behind RNG. For example, although getting an exotic through the Crucible end screen was possible, it was in no way reliable. You had like a 0.1% chance. And many people, including myself, got absolutely screwed by the RNG system. I played Destiny so much when it first came out, and I got my first exotic weapon like two weeks into the game's release, which, you know, for like a YouTuber, that's absolutely devastating. All these other people are posting vids and having crazy success, and I'm just playing Nightfalls over and over and over again and getting nothing. And the first exotic I got, in case you're wondering, was the Hawk Moon from the exotic Vault of Glass chest. But I want to make the point that when I'm making this video and saying that exotics may be too easy, whatever, I'm not saying that we should do a complete 180 degree turn and go right back to what it was in vanilla destiny this system was flawed beyond belief and i think that there was substantial improvements that we're going to talk about very soon from the completely rng based vanilla destiny ways to get exotics now over the years more and easier ways to get exotics were added into destiny I think at one point you could actually get exotics, kind of like a crucible drop, but you could get them from the end screen of Vanguard Tiger Strikes, which was, I think, around Dark Below to House of Wolves. And, of course, you know, things have just become easier. For example, uh, comparing raids, there used to be one exotic chest, but now, in the Wrath of the Machine, every chest, like all four to five chests, are exotic. And you have a much higher chance to get an exotic from all of these chests than you did from the original Vault of Glass exotic chest. Like, you opened that chest so many times and didn't get crap all. But by far the biggest and easiest change to acquiring exotics in Destiny was the addition of three of coins with the Taken King. These changed everything everything. If you took a character and took all of the time you would spend before Three of Coins, you know, all of the time it would take to do all three Nightfalls, all of the raids, let's say six raids with Crota's End and Vault of Glass, and then maybe maybe doing a little bit of strikes to get those bounty completions, etc. Maybe some Crucible, and took all of the hours that it took to do the previous methods of potentially getting exotics, and just took that same time and just spent it all grinding strikes and popping three of coins, you would get like 20 times more exotics just grinding strikes with three of coins in the same time frame than if you were doing nightfalls and raids and all of that stuff. Three of coins absolutely changed everything and really took a more casual friendly approach towards getting exotics in Destiny. Now that is understandable, I'm not here to bash on casuals. Casuals are the biggest portion of the Destiny player base and they do need to be satisfied, they need to feel like their time in the game is being rewarded and I totally understand that. But I also believe that this may have not been the way to do it, that Bungie went too far with Three of Coins, because exotics just don't feel exotic anymore, they don't feel special. And that notion is hard to explain to people who weren't playing Destiny before Three of Coins existed. People who played Destiny way back in the day, you know, with the House of Wolves, with the Dark Below, even up to vanilla Destiny, they knew, like, the grind of getting the first wave exotics. They knew the grind was real. But they also knew the satisfaction, the insane satisfaction, when you got a new exotic added to your collection. It felt incredible, and these exotics are amazingly well designed. I've always said that the Destiny gun system would kind of fall apart without the addition of exotics. They are so cool, so unique, so well designed, and so desirable that if you just had it ending at legendaries that are all so similar to each other, you know, the player base would be nowhere near what it is today. 
But three of coins didn't just massively increase the chances to get exotics, but they also made it so much easier to get exotics. You could just use three of coins when playing normal missions, when playing strikes, like normal strikes, and still get exotics. Compare that to doing the Nightfall, an actually challenging piece of content, you know, back in the day, especially if you may not be all the way leveled up, and the raids. The raids are so fun, but they're also challenging pieces of content. Doing normal strikes, doing story missions for goodness sakes, and then getting access to what were before the best and rarest and the coolest gear and weapons in the game was frankly depressing. So I definitely do feel that three of coins was a step too far. However, like I said earlier, I am not in favor of a complete throwback to what it was in vanilla destiny i don't want that pure rng based system that screws over so many players i really like what bungie has done as of late with the rise of iron and the exotic quests added there before like i said there was still exotic they weren't even really exotic quests they were exotic bounties and the way you got an exotic bounty was again pure rng just randomly when you're completing other bounties but now with the rise of iron you can begin exotic quests at a specific time by doing specific things to start your kvostov quest you can go to that specific place and get the you know tattered schematic or the ruins or whatever it is of the kvostov and then start off on the quest to get the outbreak prime you do those specific things you activate all the monitors and you are guaranteed to start that exotic quest there is no rng involved you do the right things and you get an exotic those are great the galahorn the kvostov and the Outbreak Prime exotic quests are the absolute pinnacle of stuff that should be added in Destiny 2 when it comes to exotic quests. You get really good, really usable exotics at the end of them. Maybe the Kvostov not so much, but the Outbreak Prime and the Galahorn for sure. And there's no RNG really involved as much. You do the quest when you want to do it. It's very specific. That gives the player base access to decent exotics exotic weapons without throwing them under the RNG bus. That is the direction that I hope Bungie goes in Destiny 2 by adding more exotic quests that of course vary drastically in difficulty. The Outbreak Prime is a lot harder to get than the Kvostov or the Galahorn, but that makes sense. The casual players will have a relatively easy time to get the Galahorn or the Kvostov which is fine, but giving everyone such easy access to any number more of exotic weapons, the Thunderlord, the Dragon's Breath, the Bad Juju, the No Land Beyond, just all of that stuff with Three of Coins was again the wrong choice to make. And I hope Bungie kind of steps back from that a little bit to make exotics more desirable and yes, some of them more elusive in Destiny 2. Now with that being said, another big mistake when it comes to making exotics a lot less special and way too easy to get with the evolution of Destiny has got to be Xur. Now bear with me, I know a lot of you are saying, what the hell is this guy going to ask for a removal of Xur? No, absolutely not. I think the actual addition of Xur, like the idea of Xur, was a really, really good idea. This NPC that visits the tower every weekend and then everyone is looking at what inventory it has and stuff, that was a really cool idea. But I feel that Bungie went potentially too far with its design. And here's why. I don't think Xur should have access to all of the weapons and armor that he does. I feel like his selection should be a little bit more limited. Xur makes a lot more sense to me as a stepping stone for new players, giving them access to a certain number of exotics, and for veteran players to complete a certain number of their collections. But I, I don't feel like he should have access to, again, as much stuff as he does. Leave other things to RNG. Like the bad juju if you want the bad juju you should actually have to go out and play the game to acquire it 
play the nightfalls, play the raids, do things to get exotics, and then hopefully you will add the bad juju to your collection. Xur should not sell it. Now that's just a random example. You could replace the bad juju with any number of exotics and my point would still make sense. I just don't feel like Xur should sell as big of a selection as he does because every time he sells a weapon, that weapon or armor piece becomes so much less desirable, especially, God forbid, if he sells the same same thing two weeks or even three weeks in a row that exotic has just become totally worthless for so many players like they're going to immediately delete that as soon as they actually get it from a reward screen and and that's kind of my point like the more Zer exists the more stuff he's sold by this point in the game so many people have so many of the different RNG exotics that like every time you get exotics you just delete them immediately and that makes doing stuff like the nightfalls like the raids so much less desirable like people don't have the desire to go and play the raid every week if they have all of the exotics you can get from it right like that is definitely an issue that people I think don't really consider they just want exotics to have laser vision they're like I want Zer to sell exotics I want this I want this but they don't consider the gameplay repercussions of that once Zer does sell that something and it becomes completely undesirable your desire to play destiny drops off dramatically Again, I don't think Xur should be removed for Destiny 2, but perhaps reimagined so that he doesn't give away so many of the different exotics within Destiny. Or should say, Destiny 2. But those are my thoughts on the matter. What do you guys think? Do you guys also agree that exotics have become a little bit too easy to get? And if so, what would you do to change the way people get exotics in Destiny? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and discussion. Again, if you did, please remember to support the video. It really helps me out and hopefully someone from Bungie will see this. Now, if you guys want to see more Destiny content similar to this, don't be afraid to slide that subscribe button and if you want to be notified of new uploads press the bell beside subscribe if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that's linked in the description down below as is my twitch channel which you could also follow again I hope you enjoyed the video and as always have a good day